Welcome everyone to the special edition of Kiwi Talks. I'm speaking to the legendary video game composer, David Wise, that you might know from the Donkey Kong Country games. How are you doing, David? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Thank you yeah. for inviting me to uh, talk today. That's all right. That's all right. Um, you're a hu huge legend in the industry and um, it's always a pleasure to talk to someone of your caliber. So what have you been, um, what have you been working on recently? Or can you even talk uh, well, about it? Well, no, no, as, as most people, you, we sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements and cool. whatever we work on. I mean, there's a game that came out this year that I'd started working on five years ago. Really? So, uh, mm, absolutely. So, yeah, but people's timelines for getting things finished might be vastly different to when you finish yours. Yeah, so you can't tell anybody anything for five years. Well, on, on that particular one, but it's it's probably going to be next year before I can tell anybody what I'm working on now, or perhaps a year after. Yeah. So you know, because obviously you became famous for the uh, Donkey Kong Country games. Yes. Did did that get you a lot of work afterwards? Well, I, I, I carried on working for for Rare for quite a while, and um, so I probably, but it was a different industry back then, so. Um, it would be different if it was today. So it wasn't until 11 years ago that I left Rare. And um, it, it did, uh, you know, having that legacy does help uh, get work, for sure. Yeah. Because um, cause it wasn't initially where you, you kind of got big, right? When the internet kind of blew up, that's when you yeah, started to right. realize it, that Donkey Kong was, your soundtracks yeah. were quite a big deal. Yeah, I, I didn't realize for, for many years um that they'd, they'd had quite an impact yeah it's probably at least at least six years after it was released before i realized that they were quite popular and then um with the, with the advent of the internet taking off and to, um ventures like oc remix that really um helped with the i suppose the um the popularity of the soundtrack yeah for sure and you did a did something for them quite a while back now, yeah right? it was um I helped on, I think, the third one, and also I worked with um, Robin and Grant on something we did for the second one. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of the three soundtracks that you've worked on, was uh, the second yes. one kind of your favourite? Because that was just all you. That, that was just all me. I was being very greedy, um, but I like that <laughs> one. That's probably my favourite, just because I think we maxed out the capabilities of the Super NES. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 got to be one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. I mean, every track is a stellar track. Uh, what was Great, what was you. your approach going into it? It was more of a technical thing, seeing what I could get away with for the Super NES to do, and how far we could make it sound either like an orchestra or a drum machine, or m the many different styles that w were around at the time. It was just really stretching because it was only a tiny, insy bit of memory on there. Hmm. If you were at CD quality, it's, you know, it's about 60% of a second, six tenths of a second. Oh, no, it's four tenths. So it's a tiny amount of memory. So everything had to be compressed. There's all the very small single cycle waveforms on there that sort of play back from one another and morph into each other very yeah. um, meticulously. Yeah, there's a guy online, uh, I think his name's Jamin Sam Miller or somebody, I think. And no, that's he it, managed, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and he managed to take your original soundtrack and pretty much remove the compression aspect so it sounds but the whole deal of the soundtrack i mean he's, he's done a great job don't don't get me wrong you know it's very interesting to hear what he's come up with and um, kudos to him for um uh, go to the lengths that he's gone to but the, I, I compressed the sounds and then made the soundtrack with the compressed sounds because that was the whole deal and that's why it got the sound that it did it wasn't the other way around there weren't ever any bigger sounds that were uncompressed i, I just worked with the compressed sounds that i'd managed to get so how long did it take you to compress just one sound like a particular um, instrument you probably it depends i can remember there's a lot of um like, i've got a synth it was a juno uh, synth and i got a straight waveform and Put a lot of resonance on it and i swept through it on the filter cutoff which is basically like a big turn control that takes the the, the the treble off but that's how you get those sweeping sounds and i took about 20 waves from that and i probably spent a week just on chipping away on 20 sounds and getting them down to the smallest size possible just a matter of bytes each 
so there was a lot of tweaking so um yeah it was it was it was long fairly focused uh, process that was so once you'd compress like say one sound or one instrument would you be like okay i'll try and use this instrument as much as i can on every oh yeah track. completely yeah i mean yeah th many um sounds were used in many different ways so you might have a sound doing a guitar and it might also be a harmonica as well oh right that's brilliant brilliant so it's it's more to do with the envelopes because the envelopes are completely flexible so the um, attack and decay and sustain are all flying pretty much for every note yeah 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 the, it, it was changing so you could do a lot with one sample it was completely dynamic and i suppose you'd add like delay and reverb that would be quite common well, well, well the delay had to be simulated i mean it's all typed in in hex so there was no midi yeah yeah and there weren't really there was a there was a reverb but it was very basic it's um um it took a lot of memory and i'd rather have that for sample memory so what i was doing i was taking one channel and i was copying it um, delaying it panning it to the right and taking the data and doing that to the left as well but then when the arrangement got more full then i'd have to cut back on the delays so it was just if, if something was in isolation i'd throw everything at it and then rein it back in as other instruments came back in because you'd set the sound up in people's ears for the expectation and so it didn't need as much processing when other instruments came in i heard a story that when grant came in you kind of just chucked him in the deep end and we're like here you go um he was literally in the chicken shed I converted to chicken shed I, I was in the cow shed and um yeah i, I sort of went over there and you know because because i've done it and i've done it for years i had no perception of how difficult it was but for me it was just a bunch of numbers and you've got pitch and you've got length and you just get on with it and type it but um, yeah, so when Grant first started off, I think he just wanted to throw in the towel and say, look, this is too hard. I'll, I'll never be able to do it. So we persevered a little longer and uh, yeah, he, he did it. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I, I want to ask you specifically about a few tracks. I'm not going to ask you about Sticker Brush Symphony or Aquatic Ambience because I know you've answered those hundreds of times. Okay. But uh, there are a couple of tracks like Haunted Hall. What was your approach when you did that? Um, I want it to sound haunted. <laughs> I can't really remember the track. To, well, to be I know honest. Drake. Uh, Drake sampled it in one of his songs, actually. Oh yeah, he um, uh, six six god. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, um, so I think I, I. Yeah. I mean, talking about trying to stretch the Supernia. So I was I was quite into the Russian composers at that time, like Prokofiev, of Tchaikovsky, and uh, Mussorgsky, and. I was trying to simulate that kind of feel, so it was heavily influenced by those composers, and um, that, that's where the influence and inspiration came from. So, because it's quite a, a fast tempo kind of track and multiple, you know, notes with say strings like da 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 da, like so, it, it obviously you're what typing this all into hex. Yeah, so da 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 da, which is probably F da 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 F G A. Um, yeah, so the B numbers, I don't know, um, can't work it out, but say it was 9A, you'd, you'd follow it by 9C and then 9E, and they'd all have a, a length as well. So it might be 9C08, 9A08, 9C08, 9E08, da -da -da, and that would be those three notes, and then you'd have to go back down again. And then I was using the delays on that to give it a bit of background, and because um, on its own it sounded quite thin and so you'd have to do all of that but then you need to add the offset in and then because everything had to be contained in blocks otherwise you just lose timing and everything you'd have to compensate for that with the math at the end of it oh wow so man it's a lot of it sounds like a lot of patience is required uh, with... <laughs> yeah you, you um, it's good it, i suppose it was a good job i was in a cow shed locked away from civilization really because otherwise um, i mean with covid um my, my son and daughter are here a lot more than they would normally be and i work from home and so it, it would be impossible with a with covid you'd have to go and lock yourself away i don't know 100 miles away from civilization yeah so do the same thing at, at, at the moment it's it's really difficult trying to get the, the 
the focus and the not being bothered by everybody else and it's quite difficult so with a lot of these tunes would you kind of play them on keys first and then find a way to put them into hex or would you make them completely from scratch in hex just make them up um, on the spot I, I, I mean i got so used to doing it i could hum it and type it in oh okay so uh, originally i started playing it on the keyboard but in in the end you could just hear every note and just type the thing in hex and off you went simple so, as that uh, so, uh, so, um, <laughs> if only <laughs> um so certainly by dkc2 i'd I'd just be writing in my head. So if I was, I was cycling into rare quite a lot, and I'd come in with a few ideas, and I'd, I'd get down, make myself coffee, and start typing hex in and see where I got with it. That's amazing. And um, with uh, Crook's March, do you remember how you composed that? Um, yeah, we, we got the. I think that it starts off with a stand drum or something, doesn't it? Ding, 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 And then we're bringing in a, a string sample or trying to simulate a cello there. Yeah. Um, again, very influenced by I think probably Prokofiev on on that one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, and I, I got a French horn sound or a French horn ensemble sound, just one sound, and it was, you'd always have to write really to the range of that sound because you couldn't stretch it too low and you couldn't stretch it too high because by the time it was high, it would sound like something else. So you, you might adapt it to sound purposely like something else at a different range. But for the actual intended use, you, you don't have got a limited range, so you, you adapt your composition accordingly. Ah, oh, I see. That's a great way of doing it. Well, Brilliant. I think it was the, it was the only, only way of doing it. Otherwise, it <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Just well, what I mean, like very I strict suppose, sample. I suppose I mean in terms of problem solving, solving, right? So yeah, there was, there was um, always a lot of problem solving on those. Uh, I mean, problem solving today is is a different kettle of fish. Yeah, it's, it's it's more about I don't know trying to get it to sound realistic and in range rather than having to worry too much about keys. Because I always view it as say the Donkey Kong trilogy as kind of you with shackles, like you're very limited in what you can do. But then with Tropical Freeze, right, you had the freedom to just do whatever you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean Tropical Freeze was if when I compose the originals i'd have had the freedom to have what i wanted this is what it would have sounded like oh right okay so th so a lot of the remixes that you did for donkey kong country 2 was that partly the original I idea that you had but you no, were I, by technology? no I, I, I just um remixed at that point i, I never I, there wasn't as i say there was never really a reference point it, mm. it was what it was there was never any bigger version that had to be compressed compressor samples and work with those to compose which was probably a, a, an easier way of doing it rather than feeling frustrated all the time yeah so how much of the tropical freeze soundtrack was live instrumentation and the rest was like uh virtual instruments well i mean sax guitar there's there's huh. real sax on it and that was um pete nielsen from retro studios he's a, a an awesome saxophone player he's also an awesome guitarist as well Although we use Jose on guitar for, um, um, sorry, Jose, for some of the tracks. And, and he's, again, a, a, another good guitarist. And also Yamamoto-san himself played on some of the guitar parts as well. Yeah, so how did that all come about? Did you just get a random phone call from Retro saying, hey, can mm. you do this? Or did you kind of chase, chase no, it and be it, like, it, no, I want to do this? It was, um, yeah, it was, it was never random. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd, I'd, I'd submit ideas and there'd be a bit of feedback and it was, it was definitely an uh, iterative process. So you start off with, I don't know, A and by the time you got to um, 30, you, you might have got to the final piece, but it, it was always a, an ongoing evolving thing. Hmm. Because working with uh, Kinji Yamamoto, was he was he based in Japan or was he based in... Uh, absolutely, yeah. He, he was based in Japan, uh, but he came over to Retro a couple of times in Austin, which is um, where, where we'd meet up. Right, okay. And you guys would just exchange ideas? Um, yeah, I mean, he, he wasn't that completely... 
he wasn't so involved on on the whole he just let me get on with most of it but his input when he was involved was really useful so in the one of the savannah levels there's a choir singing and i did it using a sample set um from heart of africa but he, he didn't want to do that so he wrote as many people from N nintendo that got a choir there anyway and he got them to sing all of the parts and it just bought this um this real charm to the whole piece and the, the fact that it is nintendo employees singing on it and yeah it, it's just um yeah it was quite magical so the bits he did were very specific but very very I don't know. Focused and very good, R really charming. I think. Because can he can he speak English? Yeah, I think uh, he he can probably speak English a little, but we always have translators, and um, it, it's really hard having translators. Uh, I find it very frustrating. I, I'm sure everyone who has to use translators find, finds finds yeah. it really hard, and it, it's just hard going. Um, does, is it because like what should be a short uh, sentence can turn into like a five minute? It ta everything takes four times as long. So, yeah. you know, you could start off in a meeting at nine o'clock in the morning. You could still be in there at 10 o'clock at night. Really? So, uh, oh yeah, it was long meetings. Uh, and that's just because I'd say something, it got translated and they'd say something, it gets translated back and there'd be a bit of interpretation as well. So it's it's a very extended process, but it gives you plenty of time to, to think things through before you actually say it, which is probably quite good as well. Did you ever speak to him about him maybe putting in a good word for you to working on Metroid or Zelda or Mario or something? <laughs> um, no, no, I didn't. I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, he's a very talented composer and his stuff on Metroid is, is it's you know his it's kind of his style so uh, much i don't so. think i could um really bring much to the party there i mean he does it so well what i mean is i suppose because you guys i'm sure you formed a bit of a a, a good working relationship regardless yeah, of having a translator yeah oh yeah absolutely he's very um um uh, he's good fun to be around as well he's got quite a good sense of humor yeah yeah so when you were in Texas, how much time would you spend in Texas at Retro? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd go there for a week or so at a time, and I'd probably be there, I don't know, um, every few months, so, I don't know, four or five weeks a year. Right, and would you would you do stuff like just show them like your music that you've been working on, or would you um, make stuff while was, you were there? But because of the internet, it was, it was always a continual process. Hmm. So I think the, the conversations when I was at, over at Retro would be very in-depth and very focused and there'd be a reason for being there. And it was probably to do with gameplay as well. Right. Was it, have you, have you ever struggled with writer's block? Do you ever um, have a process where you're just like, I just not thinking of anything here? I probably don't s struggle with writer's block. I, I probably struggle more with what I'm writing isn't quite working. Um, um, I think that's probably the best way of, of putting it. But yeah, I, I never struggle getting an idea or coming up with an idea. I think it's it's really the execution of the idea that I might struggle with. It doesn't quite work. Right. And, and it's a question of juggling. Do you carry on with an idea or do you try? Because some gameplay things are very specific. And the, the music that you write has to work in, in a gameplay environment. So... Um, yeah, that's probably what I struggle with more. It's, it's problem solving, really, because you don't always have the flexibility that you'd like. You've got to stick within certain parameters to get it to work. Yeah, because I'd imagine what you're given visual cues or uh, oh, some yeah, sort completely. of visuals to, to compose to, right? Yeah. But does that often change? Because you know how game um, gameplay can change over time. They might be it, building a level, for example, and then it changes by... It can. By I mean, one of the good things about... Uh, working with Nintendo, they, they talk about things a lot before they even start doing it. So they've all got this very focused um, vision of where it's going. So you're aware of that before you start, which helps because it means you don't have to do, you don't have to completely rework something. You might have to do lots of versions of it, but you're not completely starting from scratch again because you realize that the um, initial idea isn't working. Right, okay. 
But did so, they show you did, like say? I mean, I, I imagine it was different on um, Donkey Kong, the Donkey Kong Country trilogy. But would say when you were working with Retro, would they show you like gameplay footage? Oh yeah, absolutely. Or would it just um, be like more like pictures? Uh, it depends how how far along in the process. But often I get to play the level before I actually started writing music. Okay, and would you like think of ideas? I suppose while you're playing it. Yeah, I think as soon as you start playing it, you're getting ideas immediately. You're getting cues and stuff and what instruments you might use, what the tempo of it, and whether it's fun, whether it's serious and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's um, th those sort of ideas really come quite initially and then it's the production that takes most of the time. Yeah, so how, how long would it take you to finish, like, say, one, one track? I'd probably spend, uh, with all the other bits that you've got going on and there might be different versions, maybe about two weeks on each track. Oh, right. Okay. That's quite a while. Um, it is, but then there's a lot of somebody saying, well, we need the, to do this, or you've got to bear in mind this, or we're going to change the instrument here. It was, so as, a, as yeah. a level's going along, you might have written, I don't know, five or six different versions of the tune, and it, it's morphing between. There was one track um, I actually wanted to ask you specifically about, and that was the High Tide Ride, I think it is, the minecart level, where you kind of start off, and then it goes into kind of like a... Um, it shifts camera view as you start yeah. up. Yep, and then it, and then the piece changes because I think you started with the title theme, and then yeah. as it, as it goes down, it changes quite dramatically, and it's so seamless the way you you did it. Yeah, that's the bit that takes all the time. Yeah, you know, if you, <laughs> as soon as you change, you, you need things to to blend nicely, and it's, sometimes they they don't, so you've got to go and change things and change it up. So. Yeah, if you're spending two weeks on something, it's probably because you, you've done the initial idea in four days and then you're, you're spending the rest of the time getting all the others to work together. So with that track in particular, was the plan always to start off, start off with the title theme and then kind of... I, 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 I don't remember. I mean, these are, these are things that are done in the moment. You know, and you, that just happens. It, it just happens. Or somebody said, well, perhaps start off with the title theme and then we'll, we'll take it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Did they? Uh, did Retro ever come back and be like, "No, nah, we don't like that. Can you change it to this?" Or would they give their uh, the, feedback, the or would they leave you largely to just do whatever it is that you do? I, I think on the whole, I'd start off doing whatever I want to do, and then I'd adapt it later to fit the criteria that we need to meet. Right. Because game development is always dynamic; things change. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you can do something musically that influences the gameplay yeah was there a particular track that was very hard or to write or one that particularly resonated with you as you were writing it there's always a challenge whatever you're writing um, but nothing's ever horrendously challenging it's, it's normally like a nice puzzle to solve it's, I suppose it's like doing a Rubik's Cube you please when you find something that works yeah uh, do you feel that like Tropical Freeze is like your your benchmark Compos um, composition? Uh, it was re really fun to go back to the franchise and do a nice sort of full version of it. So I, I suppose at that point, then then put that style of gameplay definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was kind of the, the thing that made you well known, right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. 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 And but uh, then there's, there's other soundtracks like Tengami that I, I did. Yes. Yeah. And I like that meditative style and that kind of thing. So I was very pleased with that as well. Yeah. Is there a particular uh, genre that you'd like to work in that you haven't had a chance to work in? Um, it's again, it's so if somebody throws something at you, then you'll you'll try and adapt to, to fix something. So yeah, as for genre, not not really. I mean, um, I'm doing a sort of 80s rock genre for one project at the moment and um, also doing that meditative style for another one yeah uh, without giving any information away so i'm enjoying both of those because I, I the reason i ask is because on tropical freeze i mean you went through so many genres right i mean there's tropical stuff i mean there's there's kind of like the rock stuff <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Completely. I think the the way I look at it is, it's like when I was young, you used to see these travel programs on on telly, 
and um, I, I always like watching them and, and the music kind of helped make it because it would set the, the scene yeah and so I, I, I kind of have that approach to music that it's like being on the travel program and starting off by setting the scene and then when the gameplay comes in you've got to reflect the gameplay or enhance it with the, the bed of a travel program yeah makes sense makes sense would you ever want to do film yeah i'd love to do film have you tried um tried i haven't to make tried any... uh, I've, I've, I've had a few conversations with people about doing it but it's, it's never got to the point where we're actually doing it but yeah i'd, I'd love to if somebody said oh, can you write a, a score and, and the, i mean i have done a few bits and pieces for for films or smaller films or projects and it's nice that it's linear so it's never going to change it doesn't have to be done you don't have to account for every single thing so it's a lot faster to write for yeah that's a valid one, point it, it's just one tune and you've got a and b and it's quite easy to do that yeah so, so you're, you're writing yeah sorry sorry what were you going to say i was going to say you know when i'm doing cut scenes it's a, it's a lot quicker process because you know it's going to last i don't know 90 minutes uh, sorry 90 seconds and you know what the cue is and you can just get on and do it so that they're, they're completed fairly quickly with you know, a day or two it's not every eventuality that you have to cope or include yeah yeah it's interesting you, you point that out because that's actually a, a very valid point about how it's a linear process yeah as opposed to game design which is all over the place it's all over the place you're working with people who are throwing ideas up all the time which is the fun of it. I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of game development. And by the time you have something at the end of it, it really is a huge team effort of people who've been throwing ideas into the mix. And you're trying to reflect through the music, uh, trying to enhance the gameplay and, and the cues that, that we're working with. Whereas film, this is the cue, it's obvious. A, B, get there, off we go. Yeah. Did you find it did you find it hard though when you were trying to make the transition to short films? Because I know when I spoke to Grant, he seems to have a difficulty trying to escape that stigma that he can only compose for video games. I see. I, I wouldn't I mean Grant um like myself, he he's got his own style, which is a great thing, and there's no reason why that style would not work for a film because I think it does so I think the stigma is probably just psychological yeah definitely would you would you be open or did you even get contacted to do any music for Smash Brothers no no, no. I just saw the I just saw it online and thought oh wow that's quite cool you didn't want to contact them and be like can I do something? Well, I didn't know they were doing it. It was it was it was all too late and over by the time I knew the done the K, uh, Captain K rule. But yeah, I'd I'd have loved to given the opportunity, but I didn't have that opportunity. Oh well, maybe a future one. Maybe a future one. It, it would be nice. I mean, they've, they've used quite a few of them already, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's right. I I know Grant did a piece for Banjo, so maybe that's the door opening somewhat to more Western composers yeah, being I mean, involved. Western composers and Nintendo are very few and far between, so we've been very fortunate to be involved in the way that we have so far. Yeah. Have you spent any time in Japan? Uh, I only went to a game show probably about 20 years ago, just after we'd done, in fact, it was 1997, I believe. So it was a couple of years ago now, 23 years ago. Wow, okay. So It'd be a very a different experience. Yeah, it would be. But it was great. I really enjoyed it. It was like going to a different planet compared to the UK. Yeah, I imagine so. I am wanting to go there at some point. Um, hopefully, I don't know if they do a Nintendo tour or whatever they do, but... Um, I don't think they do. I think you just Yeah, I think they're super so. secretive, aren't they? Mm, yeah, well, you, you would be. And, and also, they're there to create video games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what was the experience like between the differences in culture between Rare and Retro? Very, very similar. Um, you had the pleasure of working with so many talented people. We have all bringing stuff to the party, great ideas, gameplay ideas, graphical ideas. And um, very, very, very similar, really. Yes. Oh, okay. 
it's surprising because i think american culture would be different to british culture in terms of i think i mean i've worked with quite a few um games companies worldwide and i think the culture seems to be quite similar depending you know wherever you are in the world the creative process of focusing and getting on with something that you're enjoying is the same whether you're in japan whether you're in um, america or wherever you are hmm do you find it that uh, do you find it um odd that you're probably the composer that's been sampled the most in hip-hop like um, it, well, it seems I'm... like so many of your tunes are <laughs> turned into hip-hop tracks i mean I'm, I'm not sure why that is i mean it's, it's a testament to you i guess but yeah well it, it, it's cool I'm, I'm not complaining i mean it's it's nice to hear it. donald glover and um drake do some amazing things with them and turn them into something totally different yeah yeah but people know yeah. straight away right i mean they see the track play, uh hear the track play and they're like oh it's donkey Kong. that's david wise people know yeah and yeah absolutely and, and they do uh, you know there's so many talented hip-hop artists out there and they do wonderful things with it yeah it's always nice to hear what they've come up with so um yeah it, it's um it's very heartwarming when you hear it very have, none of them, have, have any of them ever contacted you they, they, they might have done i can't give any more details about of it of course of course yeah okay. <laughs> that makes that makes perfect sense but have you have you ever thought about well you kind of dabbled in a, a little bit a bit of hip-hop i suppose like yeah, I got, like I with it, funky steam and donkey Kong country 2 and even the yeah i mean I've, I've got some projects that have been put on hold which may come to the fruition when we're not in COVID anymore so we'll just have to wait on those hmm are you are you working on multiple projects at the same time or are you a one one per one I, project if i'm working on if i'm working on a big project i will just focus on the big projects at the moment i'm working on about three individual projects uh three different projects but um they're not so big in scope so it's nice to swap and change right so how how do you decide when to switch is it like one day you do one and then next day do another or i think, I think it's, who's shouting, and... it's, it's who's shouting loudly so i've been working on a project which i um slightly behind on but again it's just because of the um covid stuff there are just so many interruptions and it, it really annoys me so as soon as i get a few hours where i'm not going to be disturbed I'm, i make great progress right yeah, yeah. But it's, it's just silly things where you've got Amazon drivers who have got a time limit and they want to um, get rid of all the posts so that they might have something for the neighbour across the road or next door. And they've just spent ages ringing on, on your doorbell because they've tried them and they've tried everyone in the street and it, it's just annoying and just to stop them being annoying you have to go and answer it all. There's always something <laughs> going on at the moment and it's it's not, it's not conducive to um, writing music. Yeah, because how long has that been going on for? Because you guys have been in lockdown, and then you come out, and then you're in lockdown again. Since since March. Oh, so it's been like that since March. You've been having these problems in terms of mm, trying to get I, into I'm, your groove since March. Yeah, because when, when, when I'm writing, I t it takes me about half an hour to get in, into the zone. Yeah, okay. I see. So you're in the zone, and then things start to work really quickly. You know, the ideas flooding in and you're working very very quickly but as soon as you get disturbed you've got to spend another half an hour getting back into the zone it's um and i find it, it uh, just annoying when people disturb me yeah so your your family know to not disturb you absolutely yeah <laughs> that's good they don't yeah just means and it's very hard when you're in lockdown and, and the kids are home from school yeah um so it it's 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 quite a challenge but millions of people will be having exactly the same problems oh yeah for sure i suppose you're lucky in the aspect that your job requires you to kind of be on your own anyway yeah i've been in lockdown for 30 years so i'm kind of used to it it's just that everybody else isn't yeah so that's probably the the, the difficult part yeah and at least at least you can still work i guess so that's the main yeah thing. absolutely it's not always it's easy because if the kids are home um, um well, my, my eldest has finished college now but um if i need to do some school work because 
um, not all the teachers have been brilliant here at setting work for children. Ah, oh, so right. I see. There's, there's been a lot of that to keep education fluid and keep keep it going. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I suppose so, how do you, how do you teach them about something that you're trying to navigate yourself? Yeah, you got to learn it first, and yeah. then set them on the right path, and do as best you can. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So, what's your process? And do you start with a chord progression? Do you start with a melody when you're writing? A bit of both. Uh, probably start by going for a bike ride to think about it. Think about it. Yep. Yeah. How long's the bike? How long's uh, the bike ride? Can be up to four hours sometimes. So. Oh wow! Okay, that's a long ass bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I mean, in the summer, I'd go out and do seventy miles, and then come back and and start. Okay. Uh, but but now with it being winter, it's about fifteen miles a day. It's a bit shorter. Oh uh, yeah, I, I yeah find, it's winter right now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I find going out and um, cycling or walking is is good. It kind of gets the the blood pumping around your brain. And it's yeah. easier to come up with ideas and, and there's, you're not in front of a, a studio screen you can start bouncing ideas around without any pressure do you ever listen to other music to get ideas or do you just stay away from that on the whole I certainly don't listen to game soundtracks to get other ideas I will listen to film soundtracks as I'm watching a film and I'll listen to music for pleasure so it has to be subconscious you that there'll only be a few specific times. If I've heard something that's grasped my um, interest and I'm curious about how they've done it, I'll, I'll go in and research the instruments, the sounds and the chord progressions and that kind of stuff at that point. Oh, okay. Is there any particular film composers or um, game composers that... Uh, as I say, game composers, I would never listen to a games composer. Ever. Um, it's... No, yeah. never, never have. I mean, I'll, I'll listen. Obviously, I hear game soundtracks and things like um, the original Metal Gear Solid was very good. And um, uh, but as, as for films, James Newton Howard, I think um, I think he's he, he's very good. Also, uh, Giacchino, he's very good. I don't know how he pronounce his name properly. Sorry, uh, but there's there's a few good ones, and there's some up and coming ones as well that are super talented too. But then. You, know, you can hear something on on the radio, uh, I don't know, a rock track or a pop track, and just think that that's really done really well. And of course, some some hip hop tracks are just have the most amazing vocal productions on them as well, and they can really strike a chord with the inspiration. So when when your music gets sampled, do you catch wind of it from someone else, or do you read up online, or how do you find on, out? On, on on the whole. I find that online. Okay. Unless said artist has contacted me directly. Do you ever Google your name? <laughs> I, I used to. I don't bother anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so, um, with uh, so, do you play keys when you're, or are you playing on saxophone when you're um, composing? Well, when I'm writing, I'm normally playing keys or sometimes guitar. But, right. Um, saxophone is is more of a solo instrument, and it's it kind of goes over something else for me. That's the way I work, so it's not really applicable. And um, if I'm struggling for an idea, I might just noodle over the top of a, a chord progression, see whether it takes me. Would you ever want to do some type of collaboration with all the all the boys? You know, Graham, Grant, Robin, all together on like one project. Um, I think the closest we came was on um, Reskewed for um, OC Remix. Yeah. But um, if, if I was asked, I'd, I'd be interested, but no, no one's quite asked yet. Yeah. Was there, was, was there a competitive aspect between all of you when you were at Rear? Trying oh, to do each other? We, uh, yeah, we, we were divided into barns and then... And we would stick out in the of the countryside, so we'd, we'd always try and outdo each other, which is kind of healthy in some ways and kind of destructive in another. So even now, do you might uh, do you hear something that they do and you're like, oh, you know, and that that kind of motivates you more. My, ah, oh, I've got to I've got to write something really good. Um, if I'm honest, no, um, I um, I'll hear something and I expect it to be good, and I'm pleased it's very good. 
So I think we, we all know each of the strengths. So when I, I hear something that they've done and they've done it very well, I'm, I'm, I'm always very pleased to hear it. Hmm. Are you also uh, competitive with yourself in the aspect of, because you set such a high bar with some of the soundtracks you've written for Donkey Kong, is there a part of you that's like, oh, I've got to try and match this with every other soundtrack I do? Oh, yeah, completely. I think everything you write, and that's probably what slows you down, is the research of trying to make something sound better than what you've already done before. Yeah. Because it's always nice to bring some a new element in something that you haven't done before. It's something is to pique your interest every time. And um, and again, if you've done something that's okay, um, if you're in a hurry, it might be fine. But if, if I'm not, I will try and get it as good as possible and keep searching and searching and searching for elements that really make it different as yes. much as possible. So even with, say, Tropical Freeze, I mean... Did you feel the pressure that you had to live up to the soundtrack you did for the Donkey Kong Country trilogy, knowing that fans were probably going to be like comparing it? Um, I didn't think about it at the time I did it. I just enjoyed the whole process. I just thought it was, oh, this is great. You know, I get to write what I always wanted with the sounds I always wanted, and it's going to sound like this. So um, I knew it had to sound good. But I don't think there was that much pressure that it was a, a destructive pressure. It was sort of an exciting one. Okay. Well, that's actually good in a way. Mm. Yeah. Unless, unless you like working out well under pressure. Uh, I, don't, I, I think we all need a bit of pressure and we all have different limits on pressure and we all have different limits depending where we are with our lives with pressure. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you've got too much time, that's another pressure as well because you can pressurize yourself too much just because you're trying to do something slightly different yeah. than you've done before and that's not always so good because obviously people hide because they want you to sound like David Wise or Grant Coco or Robin Beanland mm -hmm. or Graham Norgate yeah do you do you do all the mixing and everything as well or is that handed off to more of a an engineer once you've oh. written the pieces on the whole, I do my own mixing. I'll throw everything down to stems, bring it into Nuendo, and um, mix it separately if I have the time and the pleasure, uh, luxury of having that much time to do it. Yeah, because mixing can take a long time. Oh, it can, yeah. I think on Tropical Freeze, um, David Clinique, who used to work at Rare, I, I got him to do some of the tracks. Oh, okay. And I suppose, because um, had you worked together before? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. At, at Rare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Like, on, on uh, everything that you did, though, like, was he always the guy that helped mix, or was it just on a couple of projects? Um, just on a couple of pro I mean, he, he was always very busy writing stuff, and I, I know um, Robin would use David, because he, he really is excellent at mixing. His, um, you know, his, his ears are very good, and his uh, process of getting a mix is always very, very good, so it was nice that we could use it for tropical freeze yeah i'm trying to think of an instrument you didn't use in tropical freeze and it's pretty hard because i think you used almost every instrument imaginable and yeah i uh, probably even the kitchen sink as well there's there's lots of lots of it going on so it's um yeah there's a good mix of just off the cuff instruments where you're just getting your shake apart and playing it yourself maybe a few instruments a few drums as well so did you use by. did you use like sample packets as well like maybe sample cds with certain instruments or um, if you could would you try and recreate them from scratch like use them as a guideline and then recreate them um it, mainly they were um vst instruments so virtual instruments which are full of sample sets and that kind of stuff or synthesizers um but the where we could we um take some of the instruments out and replace them with live instruments and I'm not the best live player so I use a lot of quantizing and um, pitch correction on my but um, it, where I could it would be nice to, to use live instruments yeah yeah oh well that makes sense I mean quantizing there's nothing wrong with that yeah and then um, let me see quantize it's just a I think one of the tracks, I, I can remember going to my friend's studio and we went over all the sax parts and I, I, I laid loads and loads of sax parts and he was very, very patient. And I think for that one, we just used the best parts. 
Oh, yeah, and then combine them. them. Like, yeah, so multiple takes, was yeah, it like different, absolutely. different, so different takes every time, but then you'd combine them at the end. Um, yeah, so we, we go through and we put different harmonies on and when I got it right, we combine it at that point. So say with the, um, the credits scene, the credits music in Tropical Freeze, where you've got the, the sax, particularly at the, the Sticker Brush Symphony, was that one go or was that multiple layers? The, I, I got um, Peter Nielsen at Retro Studios to um, do that because oh, he, he, did he that. really is an, an awesome, awesome saxophone player. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And although I can play it, it's um, he, he just brings, I don't know, it's, it's just natural for that kind of stuff. Very, did you go, did you do the guitar on it? I did some of the guitar and some of the sax as well, but the the main saxophone piece is is, is Pete Nielsen. Years ago, I actually took that track and I made a hip hop loop. Oh yeah, it. yeah, cool. yeah. So um, Excellent. yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. And I think I sent it to some uh, rapper guy and he ended up using it. So I don't okay. obviously he he won't be able to sell it commercially because of copyright, but. Um, mm. Yeah, it was cool. It was a cool experience. You because mm. you did because yeah. that's Sticker Brush Symphony is so iconic, right? I mean, it, it, it is, probably absolutely. felt like when you did Tropical Freeze. I'm like, okay, I have to include this in somewhere. Um, I think it was more retro or Nintendo's decision to, to use it. It would have been theirs because it, it, if we hadn't used it, it wasn't that much of an issue. I was quite happy to write new stuff. So the the stuff where we remixed stuff was very specific and by request. Oh, really? So like Aquatic Ambience and Sticker Brush Symphony yeah. and then... I know and there's I a think few... With, yeah, with, with Aquatic Ambience, I did try lots of different remixes and then thought, you know what, I think I probably got it right the first time, so I'll just make the best job I can of recreating it. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what it is, right? It's pretty much yeah. like the original, but more a modern, modern version yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so, it would have been uh, hard to replicate those instruments, I'm sure. Like the old, um, old samples and and yeah, I mean, um, the, uh, Plogue, uh, the company who do retro VST instruments, they, they sent me their SFC player, and um, it's great fun to add little bits of SNES type music, but to actually do a whole SNES soundtrack would would really take the fun away now. I think I covered everything I needed to on the snacks back then. Well, and you've already uh, done it, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you're on to not, bigger and better well, things. Well, yeah, it's, it's it's on to different things. So there are different things that interest me now and get my excitement. Yeah, fair enough. So you mentioned that Nintendo requested you to do specific tracks. Did you just get like a list in an email or? Or did they call you and say, we want the, this, 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 and this? Yeah, it'd always be done really as, a, as an organic thing. So we'd finish one track and we'd go on to the next one. And, and this is what they'd be working on at that particular time. And, and we'd be working, we'd be doing that one. So mm. I think to give somebody a long list of what we want would be quite frightening, really. Yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering if some of it was just you on your own accord. Like there's, um, I think Frantic Fields, I think it is. I don't all, know what the Well, there, the there was all are. this stuff flying at the screen, but then you you kind of um, partway through the song, you um, introduced a remix of the Ran, uh, Run, Ran, Be, Run. But, oh, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But was that, was that due to the request from Nintendo or did you do that just because you're like, oh, I think this will work here? Uh, I think that was a, a request from Nintendo, that one. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, that's that's funny. That's funny. That's interesting. Because I'd, I'd normally start from scratch and, and do something. Yeah, yeah. How I felt at the time. So would you like finish? One... Would you finish the track and then they'd come back and say, "Well, maybe you can put this in here." Um, I think they they probably had the idea that they wanted that included from the off, so it was probably built around that. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Makes sense. Makes but there's, there's never any set way of working it, it's it's all quite organic and changes as as the needs are, are requested really well i suppose that's one of the great things about being a musician right uh, no two days are the same 
Oh, completely not, no. Yeah. And also, we, um, you're never the same musically from one day to the next. So certainly when I'm writing ideas down, I'll try and get the idea down within an hour in, in that kind of zone, and I do spend the time on the production. Yeah. Do you remember... So, my, sorry? Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I can't remember now, so... <laughs> um, well, uh, what I was going to ask was, is there a specific track that took you a very, very long time to write on any project? Like, just one track that just took you so long to get right? Um, across Gambians, the on the original SNES, took about five weeks. And five that's because weeks? I, yeah, because I wasn't using MIDI, and I'd had this idea that I could probably replicate some of the technical workings of the uh, called wave station on it by taking one small wave and putting another small wave next to it and then morphing into it. And it should have worked because I was, I was programming at quite a low level. And to actually get it to work took about five weeks of hard experimenting. It was, it was over Christmas, fortunately, so it, it didn't take too much time away from the, the project as a whole. But yeah, it just spent a lot of. I, I needed to spend a lot of time experimenting and putting lots of different waveforms in because you could you could convert a waveform and it would be no use whatsoever. And it was finding nice ones that worked together and then putting together and making it making it work. So it was really built from the baseline that you hear all the way through it. That was the thing that came first. And just having those eight different waves play through a sequence and then changing yeah. the pitch and that kind of stuff. And then yeah, at the end all... of it, and then at the end of it, we were like, I never want to do this again. <laughs> in terms of that, no, no, I, I thought you know that sounds quite different, and it's not the way I'd have written it if I was using keyboard or MIDI. So it was wow, well, that works. So we're, we're going to do some more like that. So as a result of say something like that, when you approached composing, say for Tropical Freeze, was there a part of you that kind of wanted to try and replicate that way of composing? Um. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> not really. I mean, it, it took a long time. It was a lot of typing in, so I, I didn't feel the need to revisit that style of composing. Um, I took elements of how I composed it and used it. But yeah, it was it was really just to recreate recreate the style rather than reinvent the wheel. So you've never gone back to hex, just as a no, no never would, <laughs> never will, <laughs> never will. <laughs> I mean, some, somebody asked me um, a little while ago to do, you know, to, to go back and um, revisit that kind of thing, and I thought there's, there's just no way I, I can go there. Really, it, it takes so much out of you, and it takes so much time that it would be you'd earn a lot more money working at McDonald's than you would writing in that style. It's a valid point. Yeah. And I suppose just, because technology has evolved so much that why would you? Yeah, why would I you? Suppose, yeah, because you probably um, always want to make the most out of your time, right? As a musician. Oh, yeah. So oh, anything that can help you cut corners or save you a bunch of time. Yeah, the, the, you, you want to spend your time working on the music and yeah. the actual emotional content of the music rather than the technical stuff so to do a repeated process unnecessarily isn't something I've cherished doing mm. so, so I want to be working on, on, on the music content and, the, and then the production not trying to get the thing to work in the first place yeah yeah fair enough so if Retro were to do another Donkey Kong I imagine you'd be game um, well, I haven't been asked but you know I mean I know they're busy but I think they're doing Metroid at the moment so yeah I'm they sure are they're making an absolutely fantastic job of that yeah, and I suppose Kinji Yamamoto will be working on that. Um, I, I would hope so. I, I've got no idea. I mean, as soon as I, I finished my involvement with Tropical Freeze, that was it. You know. Yeah, and, you don't uh, you don't email him from time to time to see how he's doing. Uh, no, no, it's. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that if hypothetically we were to work on a project at some point in the future, then those lines of communication would, would open up. But I'm sure at the moment he's very focused and very busy on delivering what he's working on at the moment. Yeah, and definitely during these um, unprecedented times as well. Yeah, oh yeah, completely. Yeah. I guess everyone's working from home. And again, with such a big team that are used to working together. Because the whole deal is when you're working in a team, 
just being in the same room and just little eye movements can give subtle cues as to what you need to do and where you need to take things. Yeah. Which doesn't doesn't happen over Zoom. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Well, cool. Hey, I'm going to wrap up there. David, this has okay. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for doing this. I know you're a very, very busy man. Mm-hmm. Um, so if anyone wants to follow your work or your social media, uh, where's the best place for them to do that? Uh, I, I suppose Twitter. Uh, I think it's um, at David underscore Wise. Yeah. Or there's davidwise.co.uk, which is my website. And I'm also on Facebook, but it's... It's not as popular as it used to be Facebook. No, it is not. Yeah. For for obvious so, reasons. But um yeah, yes. yeah. I look yeah. forward to hearing your newer stuff for sure. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially this project you've been working on for five years. Oh no, no, that, that actually came out. That uh, it's called Tamarin. Um but it was a project really by a a, 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 a one one person really who wrote a few X ray colleagues in at the beginning five years ago and I think he's finished it since so uh, just to give you a time you know just to give you the idea that there are some projects that just take a long time and you might not be able to talk about something for years because it hasn't been mentioned yeah well I suppose it's good in that aspect that you keep yourself busy and you're not relying on this one project to come out oh, oh no no, yeah, no, yeah. no there's always McDonald's yeah yeah <laughs> cool all right well that's the show everyone make sure you follow dave david and all his uh past work and his newer work that he's he's doing as well but uh make sure you share like and subscribe and uh stay safe that's yeah. right yeah. Thank you very cool much.